Good day everyone and once again we are back together. Uh, we're looking at question 5 this time around uh, from the uh, June 2021 paper, uh, that's the DBE paper and uh, this is based on rates of reaction. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And uh, of course, if you need assistance with mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us and our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so let's have a look at uh, this question. They say we've got two experiments, uh, that's one and two, that are conducted to investigate one of the factors that affect the rate of reaction uh, of aluminium carbon, uh, uh, carbonate. Um, they say aluminium carbonate uh, with excess hydrochloric acid. Okay, so please note there, they said that uh, hydrochloric acid is an excess, which obviously means that uh, aluminium carbonate um, is obviously the limiting reagent in this case. Okay, so they say the balanced equation for the reaction is, uh, uh, you know, shown there. Okay, so there's our experiment, uh, you know, the picture there. So they said the reaction condition uh, uh, rec uh, conditions rather used uh, for each experiment uh, experiment as follows okay we've got a hundred cubic centimeters 1.5 cubic uh, mole per cubic decimeter and with uh, 0 0.016 moles of aluminium carbonate and we can see in experiment two they've changed the both the volume and the concentration there all right so the first question that they ask us they want to know about uh, uh, the rate of reaction we know that it's the change in the moles okay of products formed per unit of time or you can say uh, of reactants used per unit of time okay um, won't waste time with that so using the experimental setup okay above state the measure that must be made to determine the rate of the reaction okay so i think um the uh, you know, uh, given the setup, you can see there that the syringe is uh, there to collect the amount of gas that is formed or produced during the experiment. And the gas that you have there is carbon dioxide. So uh, to measure the rate of reaction, I would say uh, they would measure the amount of carbon dioxide that is produced uh, per unit of time. Okay. Uh, I think that's the, that's the measure that can be used. Okay, and uh, the next question, they say use the collision theory to explain how the average rate um, in experiment one differs from the, uh, from the uh, average rate rather in experiment two. Okay, so obviously, if we're looking at the two, we see that we've got a higher amount or rather a higher concentration of, uh, you know, of, of um, hydrochloric acid in that case. So, uh, to answer 5.3, um, um, so remember, we need to explain this, uh, you know, using the, uh, the collision theory. So in this case, what I will simply say is that an increase, okay? Um, okay, so first of all, they said that, uh, yeah, we should explain. Uh, okay, so they didn't say we should state. Okay, so an increase in concentration. So... An increase in concentration. All right. Uh, what does an in increase in concentration do? It will always uh, increase the number of moles per unit volume, isn't it? Okay. So that will increase. If you don't mind, I'm just going to use that for increase. Uh, it will increase the number of moles per unit volume. Okay. So the increase in concentration of experiment two, uh, in this case, will increase the number of moles per unit volume. Okay. So in this case, what does that lead to? It means that more moles will collide frequently, right? More uh, uh, moles collide more frequently, or you can say that more collisions per second. So there'll be more collisions um, per second or per unit of time uh, per second and in that case that will increase the rate of reaction so that will increase in this case 
uh, the rate of reaction in experiment two. Okay, the rate of reaction. All right, so essentially, yeah, you can even play this at a fast, faster speed, you know, uh, you'd still be able to understand very well. Right, so in this case, we say, well, an increase in concentration, all right, will increase the number of moles per unit volume, right? Well, now we know that more, uh, moles are able to collide frequently, or the, in this case, we'll say more collisions take place per second, and it will increase, therefore, the rate of the reaction. Okay. Now, the very next question, 5.4, they say the average rate in experiment two um, uh, during the first 2.5 minutes, okay, is 4.4 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles per minute. Okay, now they want us to calculate the number of moles of aluminium carbonate that remain, okay, in the flask after 2.5 minutes. Now, you keep in mind... Okay, so what we're given there, um, that's, the, that's the average rate of the reaction, right? So they've given us the rate of reaction, but what exactly can we use in order to uh, determine the rate of reaction? Remember that we said we can use the, uh, you know, we're going to use carbon dioxide, right, to measure the rate of reaction. So what I can do is uh, simply say, okay, so we know that the rate of reaction... Uh, is equals to the change in this case this is in moles uh, per minute so this is going to be the change in the number of moles divided by the change in time okay so but remember uh, in this case um, they've given us the rate of the reaction so therefore remember in the moles you'll say moles uh, number of moles final minus the number of moles initial but remember that uh, the moles initial in this case would be zero. You would have started with zero moles of carbon dioxide. So I can say, well, I know that this is going to be 4.4 uh, times 10 to the power minus 3. Okay. And the change in time in that case was 2.5 seconds, uh, like 2.5 minutes rather. And our rate of reaction is in moles per minute. So I don't need to convert that time to anything else. So this will be 2.5. And of course, um, what we'll then do, of course, our moles initial are zero. So that will give us our moles final. Okay, so let's find out the moles uh, of um, carbon dioxide that are formed. And of course, our answer there should be, I get a value of 0 0.011 moles. Um, now, of course, I mean, we could have written this as number of moles. So number of moles initial number of moles final there okay so the number of moles final okay so it means that the number of moles of carbon dioxide formed would have been this amount however remember what we're looking for is aluminium carbonate right so the amount of carbon dioxide formed would have been because of the aluminium carbonate that is used so can we find out the number of moles of, of uh, aluminium carbonate that is used of course we've got our ratio there um, it says for every one mole of aluminium carbonate, okay, CO3, okay, I will use, uh, or rather, I will produce three moles of carbon dioxide. Remember, I want this, um, uh, and I've got that now. So in this case, the question is, uh, how many moles of um, aluminium carbonate will actually produce 0.011 okay i hope you can understand this if you don't uh, please uh, go and watch our video on uh, stoichiometry okay i've got four videos that i've produced there uh, just go and check them out and you'll understand this much better of course we multiply the coefficient we've got 3n uh, is equals to 1 times 0 0.011 got 0 0.011 there and of course to get the number of moles we can divide that by three okay and finally, we um, okay. We get an answer of uh, 3.67. Okay, so the number of moles is 3.67 uh, times 10 to the power minus 3 there, and that's the number of moles uh, of aluminium carbonate. However, 
please keep in mind they said that they want to know the number of moles of aluminium carbonate that remain in the flask it means the ones that were not used um to be quite honest i'm not sure why this was allocated three marks uh, but nonetheless um yeah we continue so in this case these are the number of moles that we used right but how many did we start with we started with 0 0.016 and so obviously to get the number of moles that were used in this case or the, the ones that remain okay i'm just going to make some space there okay the ones that remain i'm just simply going to say the number of moles that are unused or you can say that remain will be equal to the total number of moles that we started with 0 0.016 uh, so that will be 0 0.016 minus uh, this amount 3.67. So let's see. Um, I get an answer of 0 0.012. Okay, so uh, this is minus 3.67. Remember, this is 0 0.0367, uh, 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 right? Uh, 367 times 10 to the power minus 3. Okay. And in this case, uh, we get a value or a total amount of 0 0.012, right? So, uh, and moles, okay, so those are the number of moles that remain in the flask after 2.5 seconds. I hope that makes sense for you. Now, as we look at uh, the last question, they say calculate the maximum volume of carbon dioxide that can be prepared in 25 cubic centimeters um in the experiment if you don't mind i'm just going to move this uh over to the other side okay i'm just going to continue over there um right so they want to find out the maximum volume of carbon dioxide now please i want you to note in this case the moment they say maximum it means that we're going to actually use up our limiting reagent right so uh remember we said that um uh, uh, which one was in excess hydrochloric acid is in excess there okay there's hydrochloric acid in excess so it means that al aluminium carbonate is our limiting reagent so the question is now if i use up all of the moles of aluminium carbonate how much carbon dioxide am i going to produce right so uh, let's start there okay so I will say, okay, so we had 0 0.016 moles. Okay, I'm just going to create some space over here. Okay, so I'll say, well, um, for every one mole of aluminum carbonate, um, I will simply get three moles of carbon dioxide. Uh, sorry, carbon dioxide. So in this case, it would mean that for 0 0.016 moles of aluminium carbonate, uh, how much, how many moles of carbon dioxide am I going to get? So we can cross multiply that uh, again, n times 1, that will be n, 0 0.016 um, multiplied that by 3, okay? And this gives me 0 0.048 uh, moles of carbon dioxide. Now, obviously, that's the maximum that you can produce. Why? Uh, you can produce why? Uh, because of the fact that uh, you would have now utilized all of the aluminium carbonate that was available, right? So now, uh, they said to us we should take the uh, molar gas volume as uh, 24,000 cubic centimeters uh, per mole. Remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for volume, right? So that would mean, in this case, uh, if we want, okay, we know that number of moles is volume divided by the molar volume. We're given this as 24,000 uh, cubic centimeters per mole. There it is there. Uh, we already have the number of moles, so that's 0 0.048 we want the volume and we said and of course we'll, we're going to express our volume in cubic centimeters in this case uh, if you want to you could have converted that to cubic decimeters uh, they didn't really specify in this case so i'm just going to leave the molar volume in that uh, uh, yeah in 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 those units 
okay so obviously all we need to do now just multiply that by 24,000 um, and that gives me a value of 1,152 cubic centimeters of course you can divide by a thousand and that will give you 1.152 uh, cubic decimeters okay right and uh, essentially that is how we will answer that question uh, i hope that was really really helpful for you um, and this is how we get to the end of this question okay all of those calculations and uh, yeah and uh, explanations i hope that it's been helpful and i'll see you guys again when we do question five sharp sharp